Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to The Correct Views. Don't you love Widget's Pumpkin? That is the, uh, the invisible member, if you will, the non-usually non-camera member, Christelle. That's her second pumpkin. How many of you have been with this show long enough to remember her pumpkin last year? All right, guys, here we go. TSA to deploy marijuana detecting body scanner. Steve Watson, InfoWars. Isn't it great to know that with drones blowing up innocents in Libya and with crime up in most major cities like Detroit is now, let's face it, a history lesson compared to what it used to be, um, with everything going on, isn't it absolutely wonderful to know that we have to worry about marijuana? Let me tell you something real quick, people, and I'm going to be dead serious with this. I am 39 years old. I have been in a band since the early 90s. I grew up around a father that never once, like my mother for that matter, never once even hit marijuana. Never, at a show that I've ever been to, at a rave that I've ever been to, any place I've ever worked and I'm a professional DJ, never has weed led to anything violent. You can make your moral issue, you can do whatever you want to. Bottom line is, marijuana really doesn't worsen anyone's life. And uh, that's even more so if, if you're responsible enough not to uh, drive on it. it. It bothers no one. Of course, uh, even, even if you're one of these people that believe that it is a gateway drug, do you really believe that it is more important than everything else that is going on? These new laser body scanners about to be deployed by the TSA are capable of detecting every trace of any substance on your body down to the molecular level. While the TSA claims that the purpose of it is to search for explosives, they are also capable of tracing out the level of adrenaline in your body. The machines will also be capable of detecting pieces of marijuana within the body, the clothes, or the skin. Now, um, they're going to be using these as well to detect um, gunpowder at airports, and they're going to use it to abuse our rights. The correct views is going to give you an absolutely legal way to ruin this for them. How many of you know that almost all dollar bills have cocaine on them? If you don't, uh, look it up. Uh, people use them to snort, unfortunately, and there's cocaine residue. So the, the money that's in your wallet, the, the money that's probably in your priest's wallet, has cocaine on it. Um, from other people, most likely, of course. So here's what I say. It is perfectly legal to play with caps, isn't it? The ones that a gun when you were a kid. Of course it is. In those caps is gunpowder. It's legal to pop them open. Perfectly legal. As a matter of fact, it's legal to own uh, smoke bombs and things like that. So before you go anywhere where you know there's going to be these devices, you deliberately get gunpowder on you. You start cracking caps in the back of taxi cabs and leave just a little bit of the gunpowder residue on the floor. Everybody, I used to be a cab driver, that gets in his taxi cab will have gunpowder on them. And, you know, let's face it, when everyone has trace amounts of gunpowder on them, the machines are no longer useful because everybody has gunpowder on them. Oh my, don't you love the correct views? Um, let me tell you something else. In the world of important things, GMO and poisons in your food and things that you're drinking and um, knowing even if your food is genetically modified or not, that is also not a big deal. What is a big deal is monitoring how much pop you're allowed to drink. I'm going to teach you the way around this too. DC ready to adopt New York's ban on large soda drinks. Um, just so you know, I, I almost never drink pop. I take a few sips a day because my girlfriend's addicted. 
Um, I work at a place where I can get drinks whenever I want to because I'm a DJ. I very rarely get pop, um, usually coffee or juice. Um, but I am in favor of you using marijuana if you want to. And I'm in favor of you being allowed to poison yourself, and that is what you are doing, to poison yourself with copious amounts of pop. I do not care. It is not my business. I think it's important that people like me out here warning each other about things that exist, but I'm not, I'm not a communist or a tyrant about it. So uh, I'm going to read a piece of it that I'm going to tell you and all of my listeners in New York City how to get around this ridiculous idea. Washington, D.C. is now ready to follow New York's example and impose a ban on sugary drinks. Um, now listen to some of these things. If I could get the votes to do it, I would certainly try to put that in place, she told WTOP. I would consider legislation to do that. I would like to see that done. The issue of nutrition is of critical importance to public health. Never mind, you know, telling anybody what happens to be in a vaccine that has mercury. That's not important. We need to look at different strategies so that people understand what the effect is of large volume of soft drinks that they are drinking. It is none of the authorities' business what you drink. And here's the way to get around it. Um, oh, I meant to bring it up. I, I, anybody know those? I've got one from Cedar Point. It's an amusement park. Those great big things. Um, they look like water bottles on steroids. What you do is you put that in your backpack. And then you go to any place. You get a little piece of tubing. I mean, nothing toxic, of course. Nothing with a PCB in it. But I mean, anything else. Um, any kind of long straw. Anything that's not a poisonous plastic. Put it in your backpack and sip on it whenever you want. Carry as much pop with you as you want. If you want to, take a two-liter Mountain Dew and uh, drill a hole in the very top where, 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 the, where the tube would go. Put the tube in, run it into your mouth, and drink. They can't search you without a warrant. Let them get a warrant for your Mountain Dew if they want to. This is how you stop these sorts of things. And I am no fan of pop, but I am a fan of liberty. Get out of my life, government. Um, real short, uh, and that's real short on this one, just so you guys know, Fukushima beef exports to the United States. This is posted by both uh, Miss Milky the Clown and uh, syndicated on Red Button Studios. Kettle farmers in Fukushima Prefecture have resumed beef exports to the United States for the first time in two and a half years. You know, since Fukushima poisoned the entire northern hemisphere. Farmers celebrated the shipment of three cattle with a ceremony on Sunday. Yeah, that'd be a ceremony of death. So, um, why don't you do yourself a favor? Don't eat the radiation. Make sure you know where your meat is coming from. And, I mean, even if you go to Walmart, which you might as well just kill your own country if you do, make sure you know where your, your, your food's coming from. Because uh, someone close to me goes to Walmart all the time, and I get stuck there about once or twice a month. And I picked up some cheese, and there is cheese from, you know, Vermont and, you know, things like that. And then there's cheese from California. That cheese from California is a detriment to your health because cesium, which is a radioactive element, adheres to the cheese and poisons you. Um, so the further you can get from Fukushima, the better that it is. Why? Because radiation does this. The independent... Iraq records huge rise in birth defects. Now, they don't want to really come right out and say what's doing this, but we all know. For those of you that don't, there is a weapon. I look up, uh, you can use, you can search the words depleted uranium busby. Depleted uranium busby. Chris Busby uh, doctored a great reporting on how depleted uranium, which is the enriched uranium that if you, if you leave it in your house, it will poison you. They use amounts, a trace amounts of this, supposedly, in weaponry. And then they shoot the weaponry and the heat generated and the explosion, or even the heat coming out of the barrel of a gun, if it's a bullet, is radioactive and deadly. And of course, shell casings left all over Iraq. Um, maybe one or two depleted uranium bullets aren't a big deal. Well, how about when you shoot half a million rounds in the city? It, pl it played unwilling host to one of the bloodiest battles of the Iraq War. Fallujah's homes and businesses were left shattered. Hundreds of Iraqi civilians were killed. Its residents changed the name of the city of mosques to the polluted city 
after the United States launched two massive military campaigns eight years ago. Um, and they're saying that it could be from stress that the mother had. Um, and the pollutants that are there in general. Um, there are narrow toxic metal contamination following the repeated bombardments of an Iraqi cities. No, at the very end it gets to what some of these are. There is a metal hazards like lead, mercury, and then all at the very bottom, depleted uranium. Everyone knows lead and mercury is bad for you. Mercury is only good for you if it's in a vaccine. A toxic heavy metal, a depleted uranium, is what is left over after natural uranium has been enriched, it says, either for use in weapons or as reactor fuel. While the U.S. and the U.K. acknowledge that the dust can be dangerous if inhaled, the jury is still out when it comes to long-term damage to people and their children. Yeah, because, you know, people and children don't inhale anything, so the jury must still be out. You learn such interesting things. People and children in Iraq do not inhale, so they don't know if depleted uranium is bad. Got it. Scientists have suggested that its molecules can travel to the sperm and eggs, increasing the probability of cancer to genes and damage to genes. Wow, I mean, people and children have genes, but they don't inhale anything. That's why you listen, I guess. You only get it here. Last thing I want to get to, a Herald Standard Permit Giving for Fracking Near Nuclear Plant. I'm not in favor of fracking, and I'm in Ohio. A lot of people are. I'm in favor of coal, and I'm in favor of natural gas. I'm anti-nuke, but I don't have a problem with natural gas, and I'm not an anti-coal person. I'm a pro-coal person. Because we need it right now. There will be a time when we don't, and I will be happy when that time comes because the pollutants, and I get it, but it's not as bad as nuclear. But fracking is a fracking horrible idea. That's what it is. Um, for those of you that don't know, fracking is something where, where they, they, they go into the ground with water and fracture and looking for natural gas, and uh, that's a real simplified version, but that's what it is. And it messes with the plate tectonics, which for you top 40 fans, the, the crust sits on plates, the crust of the earth. And when the under part moves, guess what? So does the top, makes earthquakes. Earthquakes and nuclear power plants don't work because if you break a nuclear reactor, it poisons everything, right? I hope we know this by now. Okay, so why don't we frack near a nuclear power plant. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. Chesapeake Energy has a permit to frack just one mile from Beaver Valley Nuclear Power Station in Shippingport. Whether that is cause for alarm, experts can't say. Oh, no, well, no, they can say. It's just that these experts that they're using don't say because they want to be on the payroll. Um, but one thing is for sure, in the midst of the Mercury's boom, drilling companies are going to keep fracking pockmarking the earth with their mile-deep wells, blasting away at the subterranean feature that is the Marcellus Shale. <laughs> it's this simple, people. Read the article. It's posted up at the Herald Standard. Many great quotes in this. Um, this is just one. In the past, seismic issues have been linked to injection wells, the accepted disposal system for wastewater generated from fracking. In 2001, a 4.0 magnitude earthquake was linked to activity at a Class II injection well in Youngstown, Ohio, operated by DNL Energy. Listen to me. If you people, living ever so nicely in Beaver Valley, wish to have fracking near your nuclear power plant, and none of you are going to show up at meetings to fight this, you are as dense as this pumpkin! You have a pumpkin for a head! You are listening to the correct views. Good night, and God bless.